Welcome to another episode of Superior Mind Body Health Podcast. I am your host, Monica Banach. My special guest today is Carrie Tidwell. She is a regenerative detox specialist. We're going to go into her own journey of healing her body through regenerative nutrition. We're going to talk about what it is and how you can utilize it in your own health along with fasting. And we're going to discuss how you can heal your body and your mind through frequencies. This is a very interesting topic, something I've been uh, looking into for quite some time. And Albert Einstein said, the future of medicine will be medicine of frequencies. Everything in the universe, including ourselves, is made up of pure energy. So We can talk about how we can utilize this energy to heal and feel better. If you are watching this on YouTube, be sure to subscribe and share this episode with others. Welcome, Carrie Tidwell. I'm curious about how you have healed all those body misalignments. I know you mentioned you had like gut issues, gut dysbiosis, back pain, sciatica, um, brain fog, like what, at what point, what, give us your story. <laughs> yeah. So I struggled with my health ever since I was younger. Um, like I, I remember we had grew up with a swimming pool and I often couldn't even go in it because I always got ear infections. And I was like, why does this always happen to me? You know, but nobody gave me answers and I didn't understand, but I was always had that curiosity of like, why do I get ear infections and this other person doesn't. And so you know, being at growing up on many rounds of antibiotics led to further symptoms as I got older. And really the turning point for me of, I always was into health and I always wanted to do the right thing. So when I was taught, you know, drink milk and, you know, these commercials of eat the cereal and I would look at the vitamin panel, I was thinking I was doing something good for my body. I was just misinformed. And so I, throughout my life, I thought I was doing the right thing all the time. And I, for my body. And so I started to get weird symptoms as I got older. Um, I always had digestive stuff. I struggled with weight my whole life um, until I understood getting to the root cause and understanding, you know, getting what makes a health cell healthy and what causes damage to a cell. And it wasn't until I learned regenerative health that I really turned my health around. And I was like, you said, all those symptoms I had crazy symptoms of not being able to get out of bed in the morning, feeling so tired. I wanted to hit snooze till the last second. And I had extreme back pain where I felt like I was 90. Like I was like, okay, I get that Mm -hmm. some people can have symptoms, but I shouldn't be hunched over in the morning, having a hard time standing up straight. Like this should not happen in my twenties and thirties. Like that's too young. And so I knew there's something off, like something's not quite right. I would, and then I would get lightheaded every time I stood up. And so I went to the doctor trying to figure out like what's going on and nobody really gave me answers. And it was like misdiagnosis. And I was like, you know, they, they don't have what I'm looking for. Like, I don't, I can't take a pill to fix this. It's, It's something I'm eating. It's something I'm doing in my body that I have to figure out. And I've tried all the different dietary theories. I even went to health health coaching school feeling like I still don't have the answers. Um, and that's when I discovered regenerative health and understanding, removing the obstructions and making sure elimination pathways are open. And that's when I really started to, with, in, within three months applying this information, had so many symptoms get like just completely gone in my body. And I was like, how is this not common knowledge? Like, how did I not know this? And so that's kind of what started me to the path of regenerative health and then really understanding the body and um, in getting to the root cause and understanding our warning signs and what that means and, and what we can do about it. I love it. Well, so for those who don't know, like what is regenerative health? Yeah. So really it's all about like regeneration of the body. So giving your body optimal conditions to really heal. Um, so like nobody else can heal you, but yourself, like when you give your body these optimal conditions, it just, just like epigenetics, if you've never heard of Bruce Lipton's work, epigenetics, you can take a cell and put it in an environment and it can, you know, go backwards, or you can put it in a healthy environment and it can thrive. And so one of my other teachers I learned from always said, you know, genetics loads the gun, but lifestyle pulls the trigger. And Mm. so even though we can be pre-genetically disposed to some things, it's all about our lifestyle. And I really got inspired too with watching, or not inspired, this kind of sounds funny, but 
um, I got inspired to take care of my health because of witnessing my dad um, and su suffer with all his health ailments. And I thought he, I mean, he was on disability and when I was in high school and I was like, why is he always in pain? You know, and I was starting to get this pain younger and we're seeing that each generation we're noticing things earlier and earlier and um, because we're passing down our strengths and weaknesses to our kids, if we don't understand the regeneration before even getting pregnant. And so, mm -hmm. you know, with my, I wanted to prepare my body once I learned this information for my second child. And I was like, wow, I took it in more responsibility of like, I want to, you know, get my body in optimal conditions. Cause there's no way I can bring in a baby if I can't have a hard time getting out of bed in the morning. And I'm in so much pain. I couldn't imagine, you know, bringing another life in with feeling like that. And so, yeah. um, yeah, so regeneration and it, it, I could go on and on about it, but really giving the body optimal conditions to come into balance. Yeah, we'll have to dive a little bit deeper into this, um, but I totally understand where you're coming from. Like in the conventional medicine and being a medical professional myself, I see this, like we put Band-Aids on everything. Band-Aids, you know, you have a headache, let's put a Band-Aid on it. Let's give you something like a medicine to heal the headache, but we don't look deep down into the cause like is it stress is it um is it something else it, do we need to detox so i love that you are uh sharing this with others because this is so important you can't heal something from the outside you have to dive deep and, and and look at the whole picture not just like one area you know there's so many different specialists we have the pulmonology you have the cardiologist you have this that and they they don't look at the whole body everybody looks at one little part but nobody puts it all together and that's what's so frustrating in the medical medicine, medical field. And that's why I, I love doing this too. And I did, I think we met through the nutrition, the IIN Institute, mm -hmm. um, through the nutrition school, because I was like, I need to go out there because I know that there's something more. Uh, yeah. I, I myself have been, you know, obese, overweight for a very long time. And I was trying to figure out like, what the heck is wrong with me? And you try every diet, everything that's out there, and you still can lose weight. And it wasn't until I started actually healing, detoxing through fasting, through different ways of eating, um, different ways of healing my mind that I actually was able to lose the weight. And I know that your story is a little bit similar to, to that as well. So talk about how did you how did you heal? Like, what did it take? Like, can you give us a little... Um, yeah. story on that. <laughs> yeah. So, well, it, with regeneration, it's all about removing the obstructions to the flow of energy. So um, I don't know if you've ever heard of Professor Arnold Eret's work, but he has a really brilliant formula that made a lot of sense to me that I learned from my teacher. And it's um, V equals P minus O, which stands for vitality equals power minus obstruction, mm. which once I really understood that, I was like, oh, I just need to remove the obstruction so things start to flow so there's no stagnation. And I didn't realize not only can we be stagnant in our colon and have constipation, which I was struggling with as well, but we could be backed up in our lymphatic system, which is responsible for all of our cellular waste to come out via the kidneys. And so, um, and our lymph system is four times bigger than the blood. And I didn't really know much about the lymph system. You hear about immune system, but you don't really hear like, what is the lymphatic system? And that's where all of the cellular waste goes because all of our cells in our body that make up our kidneys, our lungs, our adrenals, our endocrine system, it's all surrounded by two major fluids and the blood feeds your cells and organs and your, your lymphatic system is responsible for getting the waste out. And so I like to use the analogy of if you can't change the diaper, on a hundred trillion cells and all of that waste is getting backed up, that's going to cause that inflammation. And so, you know, a lot of people say inflammation is the root, but then what causes that inflammation? And just like you cut your finger, um, it heals on its own. What makes inside our body any different? It's just the environment. And so cleansing, removing the obstructions to the flow and hydrating and alkalizing and getting the body, getting the cells what it needs to function optimally is really helpful. So, you know, most people have grown up on like, you know, I grew up on Little Debbie brownies and processed cereal and all the processed milks. And, you know, I would, I remember eating rows of Oreo cookies and I remember feeling like overfed, but undernourished, like always feel like I'm missing something. Um, and so 
uh, you know, what we don't eliminate, we accumulate in the body. And so anyhow, that made sense to me of like, okay, I need to clean out. I need to do a cleanse. And so I started bringing in more hydrating alkalizing chemistry. Cause once I understood the acid alkaline balance and really, um, bringing in that hydration and the astringent properties of fruits. I, I used to have this fruit fear of, you know, fruit is too much sugar and it's bad and it feeds cancer, like all these mis, um, misconceptions about fruit. And when I started bringing in more fruit, I noticed I started to feel better. I had more energy. It started to help clean things out. And so I really, you know, used a lot of, and it made sense to eat it. And so I started eating a lot more fruit and juices and, um, and taking certain herbs and that really, really helped to propel, you know, the elimination and the detox. So, you know, there's like a detox pyramid. So, you know, one, it could just be eating, you know, and everyone's different and coming from different places. So like the first level is just maybe eating real whole foods and not the processed foods. And then it could be, you know, maybe going plant-based and then it could be, you know, all raw and then, you know, all fruit and then juice and water. So there's like steps to it. And so there's really an art to detoxification and knowing where you're at and taking it to your next best level. And so when I learned all this information, I kind of just like jumped all in. And within three months, I was able to open up my kidney filtration, which a lot of people don't realize our kidneys, you know, are that doorway of that lymphatic fluid. And so you can check to see if your kidneys are filtering by checking your pee and seeing if you see any flakes in it. And so it took me about three months to get mine open. And once I did, I got so much mucus, so much congestion out of my body, um, which really helped my body to just come into balance. I no longer had like menstrual cycle pain anymore. I didn't have the sore breast. I was having sore breast for like three mm-hmm. months, like months at a time. And that, that's a sign of lymphatic stagnation. And so, so you want to see the flakes. You do want to yeah. see the flakes? No. You do want to see flakes. Yep. You want to see kind of like if you hold it up to the light, um, you want, you want it, you want to see something in there. Sediment. You want to see sediment. Okay. That's good. Cause yesterday I actually had to do some labs and stuff and I had to give like a sample and I was like, Oh, there's flakes in there. Why are there flakes in there? And I, I literally was just thinking about it. I was like, Oh my gosh. So that's good. That's a good thing. Yeah. That's a really good thing. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. And mine was, mine wasn't, and I used to struggle with UTIs and kidney infections and all these things. And, um, I didn't know, and I have not had an ounce of, I'm about to get a kidney infection or UTI for the last like seven years since I learned this information. And I used to be, feel like I was on the verge of them all the time. Um, and so that's another thing that just got better once I understood the, you know, the type of food I should be eating and that feels good in my body. And, um, and a lot of people too can start changing diet and be like, oh, I can't eat this food because it made me feel this way. There's a difference of like getting sick or detox symptoms of your body purging. And so, you know, once I started to like, my nose started to run a lot and it was good. Like I started to feel like a cold and flu-like symptom um, and it was like gone the next day. So it was like moving through my body. Cause as you start to break up the toxins, it's not, sometimes it's not going to feel like the greatest. Yeah. And so that's why there's an art to it of like going at a pace that's good for you, depending on where you're at and what your goals are. So how long did it take for you to detox? Like, when did you start feeling better? Like, when you started? Um, well, within a couple of weeks, I noticed a big difference. Wow. I started really, yeah, I wasn't like bloated anymore. I didn't like my weight started to fall off. I remember pretty quickly. Um, I remember having to get all new pants because I was like, oh my gosh, these pants look ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> which awesome. was weird. I, like I, I got smaller than I was in high school, which, um, and I, and I didn't like work out super hard. I was just trying to get my body healthy and weight loss was a side effect or shedding, you know, old waste really, it was a side effect of like getting the body into balance and in health. And then, um, you know, there's, our bodies are always detoxing. It's just our pathways open to help allow it. And so, you know, just by breathing, we're getting, we're, cleansing our lungs and getting, you know, toxins out that way, especially deep breathing um, and, you know, going to the bathroom. Um, But when there's, when things aren't functioning optimal, that's where things can get obstructed. And just like a stagnant pool can breed disease, you know, in the pool, if it's not moving, same thing with our waters of our body. If there's stagnation, Mm -hmm. if there's obstructions, this is where cysts and tumors and things can form. And so it's really important to make sure things are flowing. Um, It's interesting that you mentioned the whole idea of hydrating with fruit and like even coconut water and stuff like that, because like just regular water can actually dehydrate you. 
just the plain if it's not a good quality water. And I've actually heard before like a longer fast, I actually would hydrate with like eating a lot of fruit for like two days in a row. And it's very interesting that you mentioned that because nobody, not a lot of people talk about it, but our bodies are made up depending on your size and your age between 60 and 70% of water. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we need the water. And that's why you, a lot of people say drink half your body weight in ounces. Most, cause most people are eating like dehydrated cooked foods and we need mm -hmm. the hydrate hydrating food. So I noticed I don't need to drink eight glasses of water because I'm like eating my water through my food. And so like watermelon, for example, you know, yeah. now that we're getting the watermelon season is so good and it's you know, mostly water. And so I'm getting my water, um, structured water. Plus it has all the extra, you know, bonuses of the vitamins and minerals and um, all the other health components and astringents to help move the lymph system. Even the cucumbers are like, I think made up of 99% of water or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. And they're just, they're like a fruit veggie. So yeah, they have a lot of water. So what like changes have you made with your diet? Like what did you eat before? And like, what are you eating now? Yeah. So I, when I was in health coaching school, I tried the different dietary theories of, you know, experimenting on myself. And I, before I learned regenerative health, I was eating like a whole foods plant-based you know, diet. And I started to bring in some animal stuff and like eggs. So I would think thinking I was eating like this well-balanced meal with like eggs and avocado toast and greens and juice and, um, and eating like three meals a day thinking like, why am I not feeling good? Um, I was eating all organic, real whole foods, but there was something missing. And, and that's when I was like, I, I never took time to clean out my body. I've done like different cleanses, but I didn't really understand like regenerative detoxification of it's not just this two day cleanse or five day cleanse. And then you're good. You really have to understand, you know, what to do even beyond. Um, there's a saying like anyone can do a fast, but it takes a wise man to break a fast. Um, and I kept doing these like cleanses and I would feel good during them. And then I'd go back to old habits because I didn't know what to do afterwards. So, um, you know, moving up to, you know, eating a lot of fruit and taking these herbs to really help clean my body out, I still felt like I was missing something and, and I needed to then nourish, you know, because you can only strip away so much, but then there's a refeeding process that has to happen because um, we don't want to get stuck in detox and we can, you know, seasonally cleanse. Um, but then it's what we do in between those cleanses that, you know, is really important to, you know, continue to evolve in our health. And so, um, I started to, once I learned about like a lot of our food has all these chemicals and pesticides and different things, and a lot of food isn't grown properly or picked right, I thought, well, why don't I try to grow as much as I can myself? And so we, I live in Minnesota and we don't have a long growing season, so I can only grow so much. But I love that, you know, it got me to connect back in with, you know, the land and, and knowing where my food comes from and how, you know, the process of it all. And I love that. Um but a friend of mine who I helped with her health introduced me to this other community of, of these, this company that's growing food in regenerative soil, picking it at peak ripeness and when dehydrating it. And so I also bring that into my diet. So everything's real whole food based, but I felt really nourished as I started to bring this in um, for myself and my family is really supporting regenerative agriculture because we don't realize all those chemicals really have an effect on our body. Um, and glyphosate, for those who don't know, is the ingredient that's in Roundup and that's sprayed all over our food and it's patented as an antibiotic. And antibiotic just, it literally stands for against life and it's killing our soils, it's killing our gut microbiome, like all of these, it's depleting our our food source. And when we're eating, you know, plants that are grown in this, they aren't getting the proper nourishment they need. And then when we eat that, we're not getting, you know, it's all connected. And so I really am more picky and now of like when I go to the farmer's market, knowing where it comes from or supporting regenerative agriculture with this other community I'm connected with that have these amazing superfoods. And it's just, there's no isolated chemistry as I, I believe we should eat things in its whole form ideally. Wow. I love it. Um, you, you made a really good point and I stress this all the time with my clients and just the fasting community. It's how you break your fast it's everything like your fast is important. Oh my gosh. Sorry. My cat, your fast sorry. is important, but like how you break your fast is even more important because mm -hmm. when you break your fast, you're still 
nourishing the stem cells and you introducing, depending what you introduce back to your body, that's the kind of bacteria you will produce in your gut. For instance, when you fast, like a three day fast, you are going to eliminate a lot of the good and the bad bacteria. So when you reintroduce food and let's say you eat junk, you eat French fries or, or I don't know, fried foods, whatever else, you're going to introduce more of the bad gut flora and, uh, and that's going to go against you. You're going to be craving foods that maybe are not so good for you, feeling bloated. And most importantly, you're going to stop the st stem cell production after finishing a longer fast. So I love that you mentioned the whole breaking the fast and how important that is. Sorry, my cat just wants to like hang out here with me. He wants to probably eat the, he wants to eat the plants. That's what he wants. <laughs> Going back to the regenerative uh, nutrition, the company that you work for, like how do you per like how can you purchase and how can you get the nutrition from that they produce the can you tell us a little bit more about that yeah so um it's an affiliate like program so if you even wanted to become an affiliate you can and have a link that you can offer a discount to your listeners um but yeah i have a code that i give give people and then they can order online. So there's different superfood blends. We also specialize in 30 day protocols to transition to help people if they're wanting to get into um, regenerative detoxification or go deep into a health, you know, element they have. Um, we really like to start with transitioning. So instead of going from zero to a hundred, this really helps prepare your body to feel nourished while you let other things go and start to change and transform your diet um, in a way that's good for you which I didn't know this information seven years ago. So I, now I, I, cause not everybody can go from zero to a hundred. Like I did. I was just like, I'm diving in. <laughs> um, and that can be really stressful for someone's adrenals even, um, or their nervous system. Cause it can be detoxing too fast. And so I love doing these transitions where we really flood the body with nourishment. There's a formulas that are scientifically proven to get glyphosate out of the gut, um, which really helps the body to absorb what we're eating and start to heal those, um, you know, the tight junctions in the GI tract. And so, and, and then there's formulas to get parasites and fungus out. And that really helps too. When you're craving those things, it's because the bacteria is craving those things. So as we get to remove that out, then we notice we don't want that. Like I don't crave processed sugar like I used to. I don't crave the pastas like I used to um, because I've changed, you know, the gut microbiome. And so and then there's um, a lactospore that helps feed the good bacteria. So we clean the glyphosate out, but also feed feed it and repopulate that um, good gut flora. So it's it's amazing for gut health um, nourishment. And then there's a formula that um, is dark tart cherry juice that's amazing for the lymphatic system and opening the kidneys. And it has one of the highest levels of natural occurring melatonin. So it helps with deep sleep, which is really important for healing and repairing. And um, and yeah, and it's great for inflammation. So there, it's it's this really beautiful kit protocol that we work with to really help people as they transition. And so I'm happy to um, send you that information if you want for your viewers or if you're wanting to share this with your community, there's ways to connect and partner. Because my passion after learning all this is how can I make this information common knowledge? And we can do that through partnering with companies like this and sharing education and then offering these amazing supportive solutions so people don't have to feel like they have to do it alone or try to figure it out on their own. I love it. Yes, I'm definitely very interested. So we'll chat after this and I'll link more info about it uh, and how to reach out to you in the in the description notes. Um, as far as like, how did you get into the whole fasting? I know you, you did you utilize some fasting when you were detoxing as well. How did you get into it? Like, how did you hear about fasting? And what type of fasting did you utilize during the detox process? Yeah. So Dr. Morris is where I studied at, um, regenerative detoxification with, and that's who I started to learn more of the fasting. And he studied, you know, with Dr. Bernard Jensen and um, our, Professor Arnold Eretz's work. He read a lot of his books, like uh, the mucusless diet healing system, which also makes a lot of sense to not eat foods that produce more mucus in the body. Um, so that's what inspired me to, okay, this makes sense. And when you look at our anatomy and our physiology of like what type of species we are. Um, we don't look like herbivores or carnivores or omnivores. If you were to put us in a category, we'd look more like primates and monkeys and they actually eat 
fruit, they're frugivores. And so it made sense to go back to the original diet of, you know, because we're a tropical species, we've had to migrate and go to, you know, we had to survive in harsher climate. So we had to go to meat and grains and different things to survive. And so it made sense to me to to do this type of diet and lifestyle to really help to clean out. So I started with fruits and then moved into juicing and I've done a couple of 40 day juice fast, um, which was really in- incredible. I, I've, I've done one where I didn't listen to my body and I pushed it. And I did another one where I actually listened or two. I, I've done three now, three 40 day juice fast. Um, and I learned from each of them. And, and it, I, well, one thing I really love about it is how um, easy it is. Cause you don't have to worry about like what you're going to eat or preparing food. And so it just like calms your body and it cal- kind of calms your mind and you really, things start to flow through you um, better than you could have imagined. Like I said, the first one I did, I, I definitely was like, oh, let me detox faster, harder. And, and, you know, that can be an issue too. And I remember like my kidneys hurting and I wasn't, you know, I wasn't guided properly. I was like doing it myself thinking, um, I really want to hurry up before I have a baby and clean out as fast as I can. Um, and so, you know, I I like to share that in case anyone's like, yeah, I want to just go on. That's why I'm really big on transitions and really listening to your body. Cause then it, it, um, eliminates that pendulum swing from one thing to the next, um, which I used to do a lot of, of like, you know, crazy detox. And then I'd fall to the other side. And so I'm all about like listening to your, really tuning into your body and listening to your next best level and continuing to grow at a pace that's, you know, right for that person. And so, um, I, I can get off subject sometimes cause I'm so passionate about all these things. <laughs> so we're just talking about fasting and, and how yeah. you got into it and like what type of fast you did. So you said you did a couple juice fast. Uh, did yeah. you do like a plain, just a straight up water fast as well, or just juice fast? So I prepared my body to go to juice fasting by eating a lot of fruits and doing like high fruit for like three months. Um, and certain herbs to really help open the kidneys and clean the GI tract and all these things. And so I did that for a while to prepare my body to go deeper. Um, and then when I did, it was a lot of grape juice and lemon, like really astringent. Um, and then I mixed a lot of dry fasting and that's where I was saying, I, I wouldn't do that again. I would listen to my body more than Mm -hmm. push it. Um, and then the second one I did, I just kind of more listened and did different, whatever juices I, you know, was into, whether it was like apple, ginger, cucumber, or watermelon, ginger is one of my favorites. Um, but I did the, I, the more astringent, the more cleaning action will happen. So like lemon, you know, any, when you add lemon and like watermelon and grapes, those are very astringent and can move things. And so I would listen to my body of when I need that, or when I need like a green juice or when I, you know, um, depending on what my body was feeling. Did you make your own juices or did you get them? Like, did you buy like a bulk of them so you wouldn't have to make them or did you juice yourself? So the first one I did, I did like conquered grape juice and fresh lemon. Mm -hmm. Um, And then the second one I did, I would make them myself. And then I did get, I think I, I bought some that were like pre-made just to save time. And then now I just, I'm, I'm more comfortable with the diet and lifestyle that I love to make my own. So I ended, I don't know why it took me so long to get a juicer, but I ended up getting a, a juicer a couple of years ago. And um, yeah, it's, it's really easy to make juice. And I love doing like, I don't know if you've ever gotten those like ginger shots or different, you know, juice yeah. shots, but I'm, I love making those myself because I can add what I want and like, and I know it's fresh. And so I'll do that. Like, for the week. And then I have my ginger shots for a few days and I'll maybe do it twice a week. Um, but yeah, if, if you've ever had a watermelon and it's like not that sweet, but you don't really want to throw it away, I juice it with like spearmint or ginger and it's good. And then I don't have to waste um, the watermelon. Sounds, you're, you're making me want to go get a watermelon. Like I'm actually craving oh. some fresh fruit right now. That sounds amazing. <laughs> um, so this is kind of maybe controversial in a sense. So how do you feel there's so many different, like, and I know this is confusing to people because there's so many different, like you have the carnivore, you have the keto, you have the, you know, fruit, fruitarian, the vegetarian, the plant-based, like, how do you like, and you know, everybody's got different opinions about different ways of eating. Like, how do you, deal with that when you have clients and people that are utilizing different ways of eating 
Yeah, well, I I was confused too, and I I've tried all the different ones, and um, this was the one that really helped me the most, and I've sustained, you know, um, feeling good for the last seven years because of understanding this information. But I think when I think the good thing about all the diets is we're eliminating processed foods, and so people are going to start to feel good just by eliminating, you know, the processed stuff. Um, I think I think it's important to do what's sustainable. And I guess to me, it, it didn't make sense if everybody has to just eat high meat and fat. Like if the whole planet was doing that, would that be sustainable? You know, mm -hmm. um, so I like a fruit tree bears fruit every year and it has, you know, one of the highest vibrational foods on the planet. And so everything is energy and vibration. And when we eat that frequency, we become that. And so it made sense to eat the living things. For, for me, everyone's different. And I've, I've met people who have healed on all different diets. So I'm not, to, I think there's different diets for, for people at different phases in their life. And there was a time where I thought people were crazy if they didn't eat animal protein. Mm -hmm. I was like, no, we need that. And so I, I really think it's important to just tune into what your body's needing in the moment. Um, but if, if you've never done regenerative detoxification, you've never done cleansing, you've never gotten the old waste out. So if, unless you've been eating perfect your whole life, um, that's one thing, but most of us have accumulated and, and there's so much, so many toxins in our environment with, through the air with the, I mean, gly glyphosate's a water soluble toxin. So it's hard to avoid it completely. Um, but with all the chemicals in the house and the foods we grew up on and all these things can really uh, impact our, our body and accumulate, you know, more toxins. And yeah. they're now finding, you know, there's over 200 different toxins in the umbilical cord of babies. And so mm -hmm. if we've never taken time to like clean out our body and it's hard to thoroughly clean out the lymph system with foods that aren't astringent, or I guess that makes sense because the, the lymph system is a lipid based fluid. And so it, it made sense to me to do this, but every, like I said, I, I there's no judgment on, on what other anyone does with their health. This just made sense for me and my body. And some people, you know, find healings and other modalities. There's many paths. Um, but this one just made the most sense. And I felt the best doing it, even though it was so there was times it was hard. Um, but once I moved through that and got the congestion out and got tons of mucus out, I felt, you know, felt better on the other side. And sometimes it can not feel good to go through that. And that's where people are like, they want to bring in the meats and the different things because it will stop that detox process if you're going to those deeper regenerative levels. So it, it can be a little confusing um, if you're not working with somebody who can help guide you. Um, so I think it's it's really a personal preference of, you know, what makes you feel good and listening to your body. Um, but for for me, that this is the path that works and I feel really good on it. And I've even brought meat back in and just really it was curious to see what my body would say. And I do think if you are going to eat animal protein, like know where it comes from, know how it's grown and raised and all of that is really important. Um, but, yeah, I don't feel we're at the time in that we need it, you know. Like I said, when we had to use it for survival, um, that's one thing, but we can get fruits flown in from all over the world now. And we, you know, we have access to so much. And so really simplify to really amplify your body and just like cleaning things out. And so, um, but yeah, I can see how it can be confusing because I was confused for a long time. And, and I feel like when you can digest, absorb, utilize and eliminate properly, then you, you realize your body doesn't need a whole lot because you're absorbing everything. And so sometimes we have to clear out the colon and clean things out to really absorb what we're eating and feel the difference. And then we might not need the heavy, denser things that we used to. I'm going to kind of switch gears just a little bit. This is very um, uh, similar to what we're talking about, but talking about how we can heal our mind and your and our body through frequencies. And I was watching one of the videos that you sent me and one of the quotes in there was uh, from Albert Einstein, the future of medicine will be medicine of frequencies. And I thought that was so interesting because you just started experimenting with this recently. Can you speak a little bit on that? Uh, how did you get into it? And what is frequency? Like, how do you utilize it? 
Yeah. So, well, everything, like you said, has a vibration in a certain frequency. And just like you can like take your key fab and unlock your car that has a specific frequency to that car. And why doesn't it unlock all the cars? It's because it's programmed to that frequency. And so everything has a certain frequency, our kidneys, our liver, our endocrine system, um, us as a being, like we are, we can, we are a frequency. And so to raise it, you know, sometimes like we have to remove that obstruction to really um, feel that energy and vibration. And that when, when you were talking about like feeling that life force after three months of eating a lot of fruit and taking these herbs and cleaning things out, I remember like wanting to spring out of bed, not, not wanting to just like roll out of bed, but I wanted to get <laughs> up and move. Like I had this different life force in me that yeah. I'd I never had throughout high school. I always wanted to sleep. I never felt like I could sleep enough. And so just raise like for one raise, you know, eating more foods that are higher on the angstroms of energy. So every food has angstroms of energy and fruit has one of the highest. And so it made sense of why I was feeling. So I was like, so energetic. I was like, I needed grounding. I, you know, after a while I was like, I needed something to, you know, ground me. And so, you know, grounding is, is a beautiful free, free fr frequency that we have, like we're part of nature. And so, you know, a lot of times we can be disconnected by um, working inside buildings and artificial light and rubber soles on our feet and concrete. And so it's really important to just like connect into the earth. Um, and once I learned this, I was like, I really love walking barefoot. And like, I, yeah, for really those who, this, for those who don't know, tell like, what is grounding? Yeah. So taking off your shoes and going, you know, putting your feet right on the earth and, um, you know, being in Minnesota, we can only do this for so many seasons of the year. So a lot of, sometimes I'll just like take a walk with my boots and I'll like, you know, connect to a tree because <laughs> then I can like, you know, we brings tree hugging to a whole nother level, yeah. but you actually <laughs> grounding that way of like, you know, mm -hmm. and just sitting there and just breathing and observing nature um, is really healing on so many levels. Like anytime I go through something tough or I'm wanting to move through something, or I just want to enjoy life, I, I walk in the forest and um, I take time to smell the flowers if I see something and, and that's a frequency. And so there's frequencies all around. It's just, are you tuned into it? Um, and and just, you know, walking barefoot is like walking barefoot on the ocean. That's amazing. That's a form yes. of grounding. Uh, you I mean, automatically it, feel so much better when you're like on the beach and uh, you're walking barefoot. It's like you just relax instantly. And I've always heard about grounding and walking barefoot on the beach, but like I never utilized it before, before till now, like just where I live. But you can easily do it by just taking off your shoes and just putting your feet on the grass. Could you do it on the concrete too? Or does it have to be like actual ground? I would do it on the ground. Um, and um, yeah, just make sure you don't step on any, like if you live by fire ants, I, I, I didn't oh, know yeah. that. <laughs> I've gotten bit by fire. So it's like making sure you're in a place where you're, you know, there's no ants that are going to bite you. Um, but yeah, so just putting like in my backyard, I, we don't spray or anything like that. And I would, you know, if you're going to do it at a park, I would make sure it's not one that sprays, you know, chemicals and stuff like that. So really just, you can sit up against a tree and read a book, you know, sitting on the ground, sunbathing, you know, that's really good. A lot of people are scared of being in the sun and, um, you know, if, if we do burn really easy, that's a sign that our body needs to clean out and alkalize because the sun is acidic. And if our body is acidic, we're going to have reactions faster. And so mm -hmm. now I notice I don't burn as like I used to, I used to burn really easy and now I don't. Um, and I used to avoid the sun thinking it was bad and it's, it's too, you know, too much acidity, of course. It's why you, it, you don't want to slather on all this sunscreen because then you won't feel when your body is ready, you know, needs to take a break from the sun. And so um, there's natural sunscreens people can use or hats or, you know, shade, listen to your body and get out. But really, if somebody's burning easy, then it's a sign to clean out the internal. And I've helped so many people that thought they were allergic to the sun or had rashes every time they would go out in the sun. And so it's, it's just our body is communicating with us constantly. Um, but we you know that the sun is a frequency, you know, we need the sun for vitamin D and um, so many processes with the body. And I always feel better when I can like sunbathe and lay, you know, on the ground. So yeah, grounding, um, you can utilize it, do it every single day, get out the first First time, like in the morning, when you wake up that sunlight, that red light from the sun, it's the most healing light, right? 
Yeah. Yeah. Getting that. Yep. And then it's good for your eyes too. I don't wear sunglasses mm. because it's really important to strengthen your eyes. I'm not that I look directly at the sun, but just, yeah. the, you know, the sun hitting your um, eyes is really good for, mm. for eye health even. And then too, if like, I just um, learned about grounding. Well, I, I've learned about grounding mats in the past and I thought, why don't I get one? Cause in the winter, you know, mm. we're just, I'm not, I'm not as m outside as much. And I feel like that disconnect, like, I just feel like I want to put my feet on the ground. Um, so I end up, I have these grounding mats where I sleep, uh, put my feet on them, where I sleep on them um, at night. And so then I'm getting those cause it's connected to you plug it in and it's cause your um, house is grounded. And so it has that connection. I mean, ideally outside is best, but I thought why not do it since I'm in Minnesota and in the winter to get that extra layer of support with grounding. So that's another way. Um, but yeah, grounding is is something super easy and simple to do. I mean, even just going in natural bodies of water, it's like you're mm -hmm. like, I feel like when I'm in the ocean, it's like you're in the womb of the mother, you know, you really yes. feel like held and yeah, I just I love I love the ocean. So yeah, if you live by the ocean, going in the ocean, the salt water is amazing um, for your skin. And yeah, it just it's like, yeah, instead of Epsom salt bath, that's like the best Epsom salt bath. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And sound is another one, another frequency that you can listen to. And it can just really help, you know, put your body in a whole different state. Um, and even voice, like when you sing or chant or pray or anything like that it's it's another way of using frequency um like have you ever heard a music or heard a song and it just like gave you chills through your whole body you know like that can really change the frequency within um and our thoughts our thoughts are huge um you know you, we can really think ourselves well or the opposite just by our thought alone and if we're in a constant state of worry and fear you know, we're going to have that frequency in our body and we're going to hold that. And so a lot of times our issues are in our tissues. And, you know, if we have like unforgiveness, they could show up in the kidneys or grief it's in the pancreas so, so or lungs. And so if we're having these um, physical ailments, it could be an emotional component. To, there usually is always an emotional component to it. Um, for example, if like for me, when I had constipation, um, on the emotional side of it is what, what am I having a hard time letting go of, you know? And, um, so we can start to correlate these different emotional things with our organs and glands and really start to like, get it out. And so as I started to detox, I, I didn't realize I had unforgiveness that I had to work through. Mm -hmm. Um, and that came through and I was holding it in my kidneys. And so as I started to move through that forgiveness work, that's when I really started to see things shift. And, you know, when we have forgiveness, that's that, you know, when we're holding on to that resentment and that bitterness, that really can change our whole frequency as well. And so once we release that and focus on compassion and love, it's, that's a totally different vibration. Yeah. Speaking of, uh, clearing out blockages in the body not just in the body but in your mind like if you if you have some old things that you're holding on to like old stuff that you haven't released or some forgiveness like you mentioned or just negative energy like negative thought process that same thing can block that frequency that energy in your in your body that feel good energy mm -hmm. um so how do you use frequencies to heal like you use a specific method of uh, frequencies, right? Yeah. So there's frequency devices now that um, I used to get biofeedback and and then a friend of mine shared, um, I'd eaten something funny at my mom's and my stomach hurt really bad that day. And we were on an airplane and she had this little device and she did a, it can scan your body and see what's going on in your bioenergetic field. And what came up for me was like GI tract, liver and tonsils. And those were my oh. most inflamed areas and um, she ran the frequency to harmonize it. And within five minutes, it was 90% better. And I was like, whoa, hmm. like, where can I get one of these? This is amazing. And so I ended up getting this device and the owner of it wanted to, he, he created what's called the time waiver in Germany. And that's a medical grade device that's used in medical facilities to really help people with frequency medicine. And he wanted to create one that everyone can have for their personal use. And so it's, um, that's what the device I use now is just a little wearable device and it can, it has a quantum sensor. So it scans your bioenergetic field and can see what's out of resonance and send specific frequencies to whatever your body is, is in most need. 
And so just like I was saying, like your everything has a certain vibration and a certain frequency, your kidneys have a certain frequency. And so when you can harmonize that, um, which is such an important organ in the body, well, all of them are, but kidneys is really like that doorway um, to the elimination channels. So when we can start to use frequency along with these other modalities, we can really quantum leap our health. Um, and we have the ability and power to do this. It's just a lot of us aren't tuned in to doing that for an hour, you know, so using this device kind of like, um, like quantum leaping it. And so a lot of people are bringing this in their practice or sharing this with their communities because it's helping people on, on a cellular level. There's like over 10 million frequencies. Um, there's regeneration programs, there's stuff to help with EMFs, there's stuff to help with, you know, sensitivities, um, gut health, um, all the body systems, the chakras, like there's so much, um, and so I've just been using this and then sharing it too with people that resonate with it, if it makes sense. And um, they're noticing a huge difference. A lot of people are saying it's helping with their mental health or getting over emotional stuff because it can also see emotional things and it can scan your aura. And it's it's crazy what comes up. It, yeah. Like it's so accurate. Yeah. That's so cool. So like, is it something you carry with you at all times? Can you actually hear the frequency? Like, is it music or is it just like... No, um... It's just... It's just a frequency. So um, like if you've ever heard of like the Rife machine or different things, you don't hear it or feel it, but it's more of like the, uh, just the frequency. So um, it's a little device. Well, it looks like it's like the size, so you can wear it, you can clip it on um, your shirt or your pants or put it in your pocket. So it's just, it's easy. It's really convenient when you travel. Um, So I always take it when I travel um and it helps with like you know if you've ever had issues with digestion when you're traveling or things are you're eating differently so it's nice to have a tool that you can there's like pot flower remedies and homeopathic remedies on there which homeopathics are frequency medicine as well yeah in physical and this is just more of the energetic um and it has a microcurrent so it has um, a few ways of delivering the frequencies so it has these wristbands that you put on Mm. And and you get microcurrent directly into your body. And then they have a coil where you can also get these frequencies, frequencies wireless. So once the program is uploaded to this device, then you have the, you can either run the wristbands or, you know, or if you have a pain, there's pain programs that are really helpful that you can like put on. Um, and I was just traveling with somebody and she had a migraine and we use the pain program on her and put the patches or the the pads where she was, you know, feeling the pain and then her migraine was gone within 20 minutes. So it's, there's so many different uses for it. That's so cool. I love it. Cause I also heard like there's music frequencies, right? Like you can yeah. use the 70, 50 hearts or heart, whatever. Um, so they use that. So this is totally different from that. Cause you, there's yeah. like, you can listen to like uh, YouTube videos, like before sleep, there's a frequency for sleep, relaxation, different stuff. So this is an addition to that. This is actually like a current running through your body. Like Yes. Yep. Yep. The microcurrent. And then they have scalar waves. And then there's another device that has magnetic waves. So Carolyn McMakin, she was a chiropractor that started using these different or she different devices to really help people with not this one because they didn't have that yet, but she was using other devices using frequency. And a lot of her life life's work is in some of these programs. Like she has the Carolyn McMakin programs in the this other magnetic um, device that runs with the two dual frequencies to really help the body. And so she wrote a book called the resonance effect. If you're wanting to learn more about frequencies and how she's been using them, but she's really been a pioneer here um, since the nineties using frequencies in her practice to really help people, you know, bring their, it's really, and that's what I love about regeneration is just giving your body, you know, harmonization and the, the optimal conditions to come into coherence and, and balance. I and so that. that's what it is. Mm-hmm. And that's just so like, you know how, like when you, um, you know, there's certain frequencies and if you do a certain sound, it can like shatter glass, mm-hmm. you know? Like, so there's just amazing with, once you understand frequencies and sound, it, you, you could use it in different ways. So this device is, you know, specific frequencies, but you can also use frequencies with sound and the 432 Hertz or different healing um, vibrations. And um, you can always do that in addition to this. And, and you can reset there's, there's stuff for the vagus nerve. Um, so many things. That's so cool. I, I love it. You know, I've been very interested to into like the, um, the whole, 
um, neutralizing the EMFs, like the electromagnetic field, because we're surrounded by like our cell phones, like, you know, Wi-Fi at home, and people are feeling the effects of it, you know, when they're home or like around a, a building where there's a lot of EMFs, electromagnetic field, they can feel it, like their body can f- sense that. Is this something that would help like with neutralization of like EMFs in addition to grounding? Yes, for sure. There's a whole, there's whole program. There's a whole program that has a bunch of different programs within it to help with, with this exactly. Um, Even with like planetary shifts to um, electromagnetic frequencies. So yeah, there's um, protection. um, There's a whole protection like program that you can run. And so um, someone actually was just sharing this on a call I was on where she just takes her device. If she goes to into big groups or I actually run these um, the support when I'm traveling or on an airplane or going to be around a lot of people or maybe around, you know, EMF towers and different things, I'll run um, electromagnetic sensitivity or you, you can run general protection and that can help, you know, it protects your field. Mm-hmm. And so there's certain things that you can do with this device that can help you with that, especially you know, I don't need to run them all the time, but if you're in, you know, public situations or on an airplane, of course, you, there you can use that protection. And then um, I've also heard stories of people saying like that they, they don't get as bad jet lag or they don't feel as depleted or they don't feel as exhausted after getting off of a plane because they can protect themselves with the frequencies while on it. Oh, that's so cool. I love this. All this information is like blowing my mind because this is like stuff that, you know, like fasting, it's amazing. And you can heal your body through fasting, detox, clearing out the, you know, obstruction, your body, your lymphatic system and stuff. But then you go back to this world, this toxic world, not just like toxic food, but the environment, EMFs, like everything around you and I've always been like interested in there's something more like I know I can make my body feel even better you know when I'm at work after like a long day at work being in a hospital surrounded by you know every toxic every everywhere everything is toxic in a hospital you know you're breathing in toxins the um, fluoroscopy the x-rays and I come home and I'm just like blah like I feel horrible and I'm like there's got to be something more. So of course I got a sauna. So I do that as a additional detox, like um, infrared sauna with the red light and stuff. And then this is like my next step. Like I'm definitely interested in this kind of stuff. So this is so cool, Carrie. You're like literally like opened up my mind, my eyes to so much other stuff. Like, you know, I know, and, and if you're listening to this, like, of course, you don't have to do everything. You don't have to do all of this, but try different things. If you've done fasting, you've done this, you've changed your nutrition and you're still not feeling good. Like, don't stop at that. Like, believe that. And, and I know you did that, Carrie, because you felt so bad for so long. And everywhere you went to all the conventional doctors, like everybody was like, oh, this is it. I, I, nothing we can do. And you felt like there's no hope but you mm-hmm. know the, in your 20s like you don't want to feel like that you shouldn't feel like that your body should not feel like that so if you are in that point in your life where you just like you're not feeling good you're tired in the morning when you wake up when you're waking up dig deeper because there mm-hmm. is hope there is help if one person doesn't help you go somewhere else and dig deeper because you should feel amazing your body should be feeling good and not stagnant. And sometimes it might not take long. I mean, for you, you're like within two weeks, you're starting to feel better. So don't stay, don't, don't accept feeling like that. Believe that there's more and you deserve to be be feeling amazing and not only look amazing, feel amazing and just be healthy. Yeah, well said. And and always ask why. And so get curious of what why your symptoms are coming up. And and usually it's for a reason. And then yeah. you can start to to get to the root of that. And so I always am like, always ask why and know there is a way. And your body's just trying to communicate. I like to even use that with like allergies. If so, you know, it's not the change of seasons that's the problem. It's your body's trying to speak to you to inc- clean up the internal terrain. And, um, and so our body gives us these whispers and and we need to listen to them before it starts to scream. And my body was screaming at me. I just didn't know how to listen to those whispers. And so, yeah, if you're, 
you're listening to this, definitely there's hope and there is, there's always a way um, and always get curious to ask why and get to the root and foundational nutrition and fasting is, is really a help, really a helpful tool. Um, but yeah, taking it at a pace that feels good for you is really helpful. Yeah. And, and also not just using fasting just for weight loss. Like you have to understand when you heal your body, when you heal the blockages and, and everything else in your body, that weight is going to come off. So like when people just use fasting just for weight loss and not uh, all the other, like they'll fast hard, you know, and then go back to eating normal, like they've been eating, it, it doesn't work. And I've done it myself. I, I've done the hard fasting, eating crap. And then, you know, and actually that was even worse. It's not till I actually focus on healing everything else, my body, my mind, utilizing, you know, different foods, herbs. I use a lot of herbs and, and stuff like that as well to, to heal from the inside. So, you know, I, 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 I know I'm like a fasting coach and like stuff, but I don't like I'm not a proponent of like fasting hard and then binging and just going back and forth because you're going to regain all the weight when you go back to like the old lifestyle, like believe into in in the healing from the inside. And that weight is going to come off, you're going to have to be patient with it, because you're going to heal, you know, all the other obstructions, the lymphatic system, uh, the mindset, everything else. But, you know, it didn't take you like 30 days to get to this point to get your body to this point so be patient with yourself don't expect it to come off right away um so i'm glad that you brought that up too because i i do i get asked about it a lot and i and i just wanted to make it clear that i'm not a proponent of that and i don't believe that that's healthy and i've done it myself and it didn't work for me so here i am (laughs) digging deeper into like how to make our bodies our minds and just feeling amazing at any age (laughs) <laughs> yeah so, um yeah go ahead oh and I, I was just going to share one more thing about um that because I s- struggled with the weight loss thing too but it was once I understood like the, like I said the health of the cell and I realized wow I want to get my adrenals working better and my kidneys opened up and I understood the endocrine system controlled the functions of our body and our adrenal glands sit on top of our kidneys and control the function of the kidneys. And if they're burnt out from all the coffee and all the processed foods and sugars and different things that stimulate, um, they're not going to, they control sugar metabolism, like cortisol, like all these things are inflammation. Like if we're not, our body isn't, um, fighting the inflammation and we need like these cortisone injections that further weakens the adrenal glands. And so once you start to see this ripple effect, you're like, okay, I want my, I want my adrenal glands back online. I want them to function optimally and what's causing it not to. And so then you're like, I never even really knew much about my adrenal glands or the function of my pancreas or, you know, all these different organs. And so really get to know your body. I feel like we take better care of our cars than we do our own body. And if if the the check engine light is on, we take it to six. And so how many times have we gotten our check engine light on in our body? And we just think it's normal. It's just common. Um, like heartburn and digestive stuff or skin stuff like, Oh, it's just teenage acne. It's like, no, that's not normal to have that or going through menopause in having all these hot flashes. It's not normal. It's just common. And so if we have these different symptoms, that's our check engine light. And we need to get our, not only get our check engine light checked out, but also change the oil, you know? And that's, I I feel like the oil is kind of like our lymphatic system, like clean out, um, remove the obstructions. And then the health of the body will start to come into balance and our adrenal glands can start to function optimally. And then we won't be so tired and we won't need those cortisone injections because our adrenal glands can help that inflammation and release that naturally. And so, um, same with all our hormones, you know, if our hormones aren't balanced, why? And it goes back to what's causing obstruction to that organ or gland. It's the flow of energy of, and um, the lymphatic system can be sitting like kind of like a blanket over it and not allowing the nutrition to get in. So we have to like remove it and then things start to function better. And then weight loss is just a side effect. So if you can focus on the health of you, the cell, the cell and um, and start to I, I had to unlearn and relearn. So being open mm-hmm. to unlearning and being you're exactly where you need to be. And it's totally OK. Um, if my parents knew 
what I know now, they maybe they wouldn't have given me all the dairy and all the things that cause the ear infections and congestion. And so we can't go back and change anything. All we can do right now is like learn this information. And I love um, like social media, how it's bringing people together and sharing this information and collaborating. And like for you being the experiment on yourself and learning and then teaching it and sharing and having this podcast to really help people know that there is another way um, if it resonates and if it makes sense for that person. And so yeah, there's always a way and yeah, never give up on yourself. Even if you feel like you're the only one wanting to change your diet, that was something I've had to, that could be a whole nother topic, but um, yeah, being the odd one out in the family changing, but I had to, I had to do it for myself because I, I didn't like the way I was feeling every morning. And um, yeah. And once you feel the difference, you, you don't want, you don't want to go back. You want to mm -hmm. then share this news with other people and in case it can help them. Um, and it's, it's all about the quality of our life as we age. You know, um, I've heard some people say, well, I you only live once and I get that, but I saw my dad struggle and suffer so much that mm -hmm. he couldn't mm -hmm. play with his grandkids. He ended up passing from kidney failure and he had all these warning signs. Now that I know all this stuff, I see all the symptoms he had prior and had he just changed things up, he could have had a totally different quality of life. Um, but I'm grateful for everything he came into this world to teach me to now understand, have a better understanding of health and the kidneys and the functions of our body. And so um, no matter where you're at, um, you can always, you know, start today. I love it. And, and thank you for what you're doing. I think it's amazing that you're using your own journey, your own healing journey to show it to others that it is possible, that there's hope. That I mean, that's huge. I, I appreciate appreciate you doing that. Uh, we'll definitely talk more. Um, before we go, um, of course, I'm going to link everything in the description, your Instagram account uh, p that people can reach you. Is there any other way that you would uh, want people to reach you or is your Instagram the best? Um, yeah, my Instagram is, is perfect. You can always send me a message if you have any questions on anything. It's just at Carrie Tidwell. Um, which is K-A-R-R-I-T-I-D-W-E-L-L. -L. Awesome. I will link that in the description. Before we go, the last question I always ask most of my guests, it's one of my favorite questions, is uh, what are the three things you wish you had known sooner? I think we touched on a lot of them already in this interview, but um, anything related to nutrition, life, weight loss, mindset? Yeah, Um uh, you know, I was journaling this morning and what came through was, well, one is always ask why if something's happening in your body. Um, cause like I said, if my parents would have known why I kept getting those ear infections, I could have avoided all those rounds of antibiotics, mm -hmm. which further caused digestive stuff and so on. Um, and, and take really good care of yourself because you pass, you can pass that down into your kids and we can really create, you know, future generations in a healthier way. If we start to understand, you know, we have total power and control of our health. It's not just wow. genetic. Yes. Um, and so you are the protocol, you are the healer. And um, sometimes we just need a little help along the way, which is why we have these amazing resources to really help, you know, people with that next step. Um, well, fruit, I talked about that fruit is fruit. Ha, don't have the fruit fear. And if you um, have a hard time with fruit there, you know, it's, it's, there's usually a reason for that. And so, um, yeah, you know, not being scared to have that because it's part of what really helped heal for me. Um, and then what else? Oh yeah. Getting out of your comfort zone. That was one thing that, um, really helped me evolve and I continue to want to put myself getting out of my comfort zone to grow. So, yeah. um, that's something that's helped. And, um, Oh, and then the other thing is for a long time, I was the victim and I didn't really get into my more emotional story of my poor me. I, I used to have that victim mentality of like, why all these things are happening to me. And I realized, um, that I can be, con you can't control what happens to you, but you can control how you respond to it and you can be the creator of your reality. And this was something that I've had to learn in my twenties of like, okay, why am I here? What's my purpose? Instead of poor me, why is this all happening to me? And that really shifted my perspective of, okay, I'm here. I must be here for a reason. So I'm going to live like to the fullest and figure it out. And so I've been following that thread for a while. And, wow. um, it 
perspective is so much more enjoyable when you can look at it from that perspective. Oh, I love these. This is why I love this question. Like this, the, oh, these are such good. I mean, these are just, just diamonds right here. Thank you for sharing those. Again, thank you, Carrie, for your time. I look forward to connecting with you more. Um, I'll link everything in the description and uh, share this with others. If you enjoyed this interview, of course, check Carrie out on her Instagram, subscribe to the, the podcast, share it with others. Uh, this is just, I mean, this info is something that we need to share with others to give people hope that there's hope out there because there is, because we are an examples of this. Mm-hmm.